Hello. Right, here we are. We are in 3D Studio Max 2015. Today was the last day of me staying on subscription. I decided not to stay on subscription because it was just annoying and a waste of money, I think, for the last five years. So, I'm stuck on 215. Um, the, we're having a quick look at um, Octane Render. This is a demo version of Octane Render. My main concern with anything I ever do ever again is if it can't do fur and hair, I don't care for it. It's got to be good, otherwise forget it. And good and useful is like the thing I'm looking for. So, um, mental ray is okay. Let's throw mental ray up here. Whoop, not that one. This one. So mental ray. This is mental ray render um, or renders. So the good side is it's nice. Let's click that eye off there. It's nice. Off you go. It's nice fur that is basically nice and soft and very fine and got lots of fur on it. It is proper furry fur. The downside of mental ray fur is no interactivity in the rendering. You just wait for it and hopefully it looks okay. And then if it isn't, you wait another four minutes to figure out what the change might be. So yeah, that's a bit annoying. So trying to fix that uh, brings me to bloop, being in here. So what we've got here is Octane Render Demo for Studio Max 2015. Um, and I'm playing with her fur and hair um, so if I'm, if I'm on here, kaplunk, um, I have the hair and fur shader. It doesn't look, if you, it doesn't seem to support the buffer. So um, anything you do inside the material parameters is just not there because the only way it can do anything is geometry. So even though I said my tip color is green and my root color is blue, um, because I am in render settings here having to use geometry for hairs rather than buffer or mental ray primitive. I don't think it supports either of those. Um, please leave a message or a comment below in YouTube if it actually does. Um, but don't just say it does. Say how you make it work if you're going to say that. Otherwise, don't just say it does because that's irrelevant. Anyway, moving on. So it does support geometry. The downside of geometry is you don't get any of your tip or root color. You just get a polygon that you give a color. Um, and the way you color those polygons is via the texture map that is applied to the geometry that the fur is growing out of, which sort of is okay because that's how sort of cats work anyway. They have, you know, you, you generally speaking, you do that anyway. The, the downside I see from that um, is... You probably could do it from vertex colors, to be honest, as well. Not tried vertex colors, but maybe you could. Maybe you can't. I don't know. You can do it from bitmaps for sure. Um, if I'm in my material thingy over here, we can see they've got this uh, fantastic um, JPEG. I can change it to that one. Let's do uh, that one. So that makes it a bit more subtle looking. Um, you want then to see me move this around, don't you? So, um, so once... Octane has got hold of this geometry updated thing inside the um, inside the GPU. We can then uh, use the preview renderer to sort of move around, and it's all sort of basically um, real time, which is all cool, which is like quite useful. The downside of being on the GPU um, is that any geometry change it's not aware of. So if I select um, the eyes for, for example and I move them so they're over here if I go and move this around again yeah it doesn't understand that they've moved it, it, it's not on the graphics card that they've actually moved so I'll just undo and undo the uh, thing control Z on that so that's a downside the good side is it's super duper quick at rendering anything you know it just goes because it's just geometry now just well, hey we can do it um, in your shadery things over here, you'll notice got a load of black bits. That's basically their mental ray. Doesn't know what they are, so just renders them black. Um, these are octane shaders. Um, if I go to the top of it, you'll see it's a diffuse material, and it's under octane render demo, diffuse glossy mixed portal 
and a cat meow in the background. What is up with you? I'm just giving you some tuna. You, the world's awesome for you, mate. You're not having to like, you've got your own cat fur. I'm making mine. Cats. Anyway, right, so blah, 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 blah. Bloop. Back in here. Um, I'm sort of waffling on a bit, but it's, don't you know, not paying for it, so who cares? So, yeah. Um, do I like Octane? Do I see potential for Octane for fur and hair? <sighs> yes and no. Yes is quick, so that's cool. Um, I don't doesn't appear to be a hair shader for it, or a fur shader. Um, maybe you can make one sort of out of nodes and things, I don't know. But nice if they actually supplied one, wouldn't it? That'd be cool. Um, but it doesn't look bad. Looks sort of okay. Still looks quite sort of even if I zoom in, it looks a bit patchy. Oh, maybe not that patchy. Mm. No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I mean, we do get the the fur is nice and fine at the end. It does support all that sort of stuff, so it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, I've not got all of them switched on here in the viewport, just to keep it sort of like cool. Um, I don't know. What do you think? So, yeah, the thing it doesn't support is a mental ray primitive, which I thought would be nice because if it did, I would then guess we might get the shading from it as well. Um, but we don't. So, it's interesting, is what I'm going to say. So, my next little stop in my quest for something that is useful for fur and hair inside Max that gives me good feedback, render feedback, and supports lots of things would be having a look at um, V-Ray next and then I think after that I'll have a look at um, Mosquito, Mosquito, Mos can't even say it, Mosquito Renderer from Seabass. There's my free stop. So this is alright, I mean it's it's sort of useful, I can do stuff with it, it's quick. A um, few restrictions on it, um, but you know, yeah interesting uh i don't know if you know another thing i don't know is it, i'm going to think it doesn't if you've got deforma deformations in your um in your scene i don't think that's going to support them as well preview wise whereas i know in blender i think everything's supported in blender but this is like a separate plugin you know this is sort of like a separate renderer with a plugin that connects to it. This is how this works. That's why it has to move everything to that um, graphics card. Whereas in Blender, well, you can have both for a start. You can have GPU and CPU, and it sort of supports everything. Hmm. Don't know. Quite like it though. It's very fast. It does feel incredibly whooshy. You know, it's not struggling at all to do the fur. I mean, I've only I've only got a head on this, and it's not. How many uh, polygons was this thing doing? Uh, I need to use my splish man doing uh, that guy. Yeah, so it's hair and fur. We're looking at 100,000 hair count ish. Yeah, and we've got 16 segments along each strand so we can get this curliness if we need it. It's possible. We'll see. Right. I think we're done really, so um bloop, and that will do. Catch you later. Cheers. Hope that's of any use whatsoever. <laughs> See you in a bit. Bye.